Hello! This is a tutorial video for Jig and Courant by Bach, transcribed for the violin, just as you can find them in Suzuki Violin Book 7. These two pieces are connected since they come from the same source, which is the first suite by Bach, uh, the famous one that starts with a prelude. And they are the last one, the last dance and the middle dance of that suite. So today we're going to explore how to work on them from scratch. And also I'm going to give you some pro tips to learn how to perform them in the best possible way. Um, but first I'm going to play through the two pieces, starting with the Courant, since it comes first in the original piece, and then the jig. Thank you. 
two beautiful pieces, unfortunately, they are mostly put aside after playing the big Bach A minor concerto in book seven. And they have so much potential and they have so much joy and so much music that uh, and, and teaching that we can learn from it. Um, that, that's why I wanted to make this special video for it. Um, and also the fact that they are connected since they come from the same piece, that suite number one. So the first thing I would do is to, context, to contextualize it, is to listen to the whole suite if you can. I'm going to put some links in the description of some recommendations, but to be honest, listen to as many different options as possible, because every person who plays this piece in different instrument, cello, viola, or even violin, um, each person has their own view of this piece, and it is one of those pieces that allow you to express yourself into every different dimension. And as the more you play it, and every day you play it, it will sound different. So let's just go directly now to the tutorial. To continue with the Suzuki theme of this, uh, I would like to ask you a question while I'm teaching you the tutorial to think about which pieces do you think you should review for, this, for these pieces that are coming now. So let's start with the jig. There's a clue, there might be another jig somewhere. Um, the jig, um, very slowly. We've done this before, it's not particularly difficult to play this beginning, but it's important to get the right articulation. And each one of those notes are going to be slightly lifted because they're very, very light. Um, and the slurs are always going to have that kind of bounce. Apart from that, there's just a couple of moments where we need to check the intonation is always right. So one is bar 8. Um, I'm going to play from the bar 7. That G sharp. And the same at the end of that um, first, first half. That G sharp again. So that by 11 and 12. Just check intonation slowly a few times. For intonation purposes, uh, another section that might be tricky is near the end. We have a sequence of... Again, G sharp. We shift. Shift back to low one. Where, they are, where the accidentals are a little bit trickier. Um, there might be two or three more places, so just check, it depends on the person as well, which bits do you think needs to work on the intonation. And practice it very slowly just to get the notes and the bowings. Just one note about bowings, when you listen to different versions or watch different versions, you will see people doing different bowings. These bowings um, are not original, Unfortunately, the original of this piece is lost, so we don't know what Bach actually wrote. Um, but these are pre pretty good bowings. Um, you can discuss whether they're better or worse. But whatever bowings you're doing, make sure that we keep that articulation within those bowings. Um, I'll come back to the jig for the profit at the end. Let's continue with the current now. Um, something that we explore in these two pieces is sequences and also going to the main main bit of the bar and away from the main bit of the bar. That is very obvious in the current. So we go to the beginning of the bar and away and then another crescendo to the next bar. Same. So what would we have? Tam, bam, bam. A little bit like a ball bouncing. Yam, bam, bam. It's always the same kind of dynamics. Then. 
disco ven. First bit of the bar, away from the first bit of the bar. So here we go away, and then towards the first. Both of these pieces start with an up bit, and the up bit will always go to the down bit. The down bit will always be the strongest, and then we go away from it. So in the in the jig, which I didn't talk. Same idea. Continue with the current. Um, again, this bowing. As the sequence continues, we get louder and louder, and we want to hear that last note. Um, also, be very careful with um, string crossing, like. That is very seamless. Try to stay between the two strings as close as possible when you learn that. Um, in the second half, we have a few more um, intonation bits. From here. And we change. That note is so beautiful. Let's enjoy it. That bit. Very important to get all those notes right, so... You can do it separate both. Just to catch those notes right in tune. Then we jump to bar 31. This is probably one of the trickiest bits. You've probably done this before in many places, but it's still tricky. This section. So... Treat it first like double stops. Next bar. So, what's tricky about this is that being tritones, this diminished and fifths. Um, they are very tricky to tune because they're, they're not consonant, they're quite dissonant. And the fingers are kind of very, very together, or even one underneath the other. Okay, so always listen for... And Once we know this, then the bowing... Just practice it. You can always practice it by open strings. Having a flexible wrist will really help here. We don't want to use too much. Um, and finally, the end. I would say at the end, I would probably jump into third position a bit earlier. I would just do that, as it is easier to shift when we're having an open string. Another thing that will definitely help you is blocking the finger in two strings. For example, here at the end. If you put the finger on both strings to start with, it will be easier than having to swivel around. There's a few moments like this and they are marking the music with a little um, 
I don't know how you call it, um, square thing. Uh, one is in bar six, for example. It's exactly the same as this first one. But there's a few, and you will find those very useful. Now, if you're still here and you're still listening to this tutorial, it's probably because you want to know how to get a little bit more pro at this piece. And also, what these pieces will give you, because this is just the beginning of working on Bach and accompanied. Now, I had a question for you about the review pieces, so I hope you can write them on the, on the comments, but just to give you a few that will definitely, definitely help you. One is from book three, the bourre, the last piece. Um, another one is the beginning of book five. Those two pieces are also from the same source, from the, from the suites by Bach for cello solo. And Suzuki transcribed them into violin because he thought they are not just beautiful pieces, but also they, have, they teach you so much about music and how to perform. And in these cases, now that we are learning these pieces, we can go back to those ones we already know and just update them, upgrade them, give them our love and our most, um, all the abilities that we have learned during the years and put them in there. Now, why is this important to work on those review pieces? Um, it's because then we can work on timing, we can work on how to express ourselves through music. So, for example, if we go to the book three one, you can hear the different voices. Um, you can also hear that I'm taking some time. And this is just exactly the same that we can do with this current of the jig. So, We don't need to play them metronomically anymore. This is an accompaniment. This is a piece that we want to um, dance, so it shouldn't be too much of a tempo change, but at the same time, it should be something that we can express ourselves by ourselves. So... So that's one, one of those things that we can work on more and more as we evolve as musicians. Um, same thing with the jig. So apart from the phrasing off, when we phrase off, we can also slightly move the tempo around, slightly move the beat from going completely stable to slow down a bit and then catch up again and then slow down again. So that is the magic that we can find in this music. And I would recommend you again to listen to as many options as possible because every person will have their own opinion on how to bend uh, time and space. And this will be really, really beneficial for you. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you really did, I suggest you subscribe and like it because more people will be able to watch it later on. And also you won't, you won't miss any more videos like this. Take care.